You can't associate with the word Muhammad. You read it a thousand times, altogether lovely, altogether lovely. Or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. Anybody. Your name should be retained. Mr. Black is Mr. Black. Though he's white. He's a European, a Caucasian. But you can't say Mr. Uh, Mr. Abu uh, Aswad. You can't say in Arabic, this is Mr. Aswad. He is Mr. Black. If I say in Urdu, I say he is Mr. Black hair. I can't say he is Mr. Kala. You know? It's ridiculous. I have no right to translate names of people. You know, at one time, the president of South Africa was Munir Swat. Munir in Afrikaans means Mr. Swat means Black. Munir Swat means Mr. Black. But I have to retain the word Swat to tell you that he's an Afrikaner. If I translated it as Mr. Black, you might think he's an Englishman. If I translated that Mr. Kala, you think he's a Pakistani. Can you see? If I translated that into Zulu, Ninzan, Myama, it means black. You'll think he's a Zulu, the president of South Africa. You have no right to translate names of people. But they have been doing that. Muhammad Im, they translated as altogether lovely. But the word Muhammad is there in the Hebrew language in the original. Now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we say, when we analyze, but to give you further proof, that this sickness has been very common among the translators of the Bible, more especially in Christendom. You see, they have been translating names like, for example, Messiah. Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. Hebrew word, Messiah. In Arabic, Masih. Translated, Christ. How does that come about? How do we call him Christ? I said, you see, the Hebrew word Messiah or Masih means to anoint, to rub over. You know, when we Muslims, when we go for Salat, prayer, we make wudu, ablution. And in the part of our ablution, besides washing the hands, brushing the teeth, washing the face, washing the feet, the arms up to the elbows, we wet our hands and we rub them over this way. Every Muslim does that. If he's particularly with his prayers five times a day, he does that. Every time he makes wudu, he, after washing everything, he wets his hands and he rubs them over. Like this, like that, and like that. What do we call that? Masa. See, we say masa. Masa comes from the Hebrew word, same word, masa. Masa, masaha in Arabic and Hebrew means to rub, to massage, to anoint. And the person who is so done, we call him Messiah, Masih, on whom this was done. Priests and kings were anointed, means rubbed over with holy oil or holy water. Say, from today you are our priest, our imam, or from today you become our ruler. See, we say like the coronation ceremony, you have the gowning ceremony, now you have the anointing ceremony. That's what it means, anointed. So, Messiah, in Greek, translated into Greek, is Christos. Christos means anointed. And they take off the os. Christos is a bit lengthy, so you get left with Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the one who is anointed. Priests and kings were anointed. So this is the title of Jesus, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Jesus again was not his name. His name was classical Yeshua. Esau, Isa. That was his name. In the Hebrew language, when he was born, his mother didn't give him the name Jesus because there's no such word as Jesus in Hebrew. J, the J is not there. 
is Isis, Esau, Isa, Yeshua, classical Yeshua. But they have a, a habit. The Westerner, he has a sickness for adding J's where there are no J's. They have what is called a J sickness. So Yusuf, there's a Joseph. Yaqub, there's a Jacob. See? <laughs> Johanna, there's a John. Where there is no J, they put a J. Latinizing the words, as if it sounds like Western. This is a sickness. All subject people have, but more particularly, the Christians had it. They add J's. It says, Yahuwah. So the Jehovah's Witness was Jehovah. They put a J with this no J. Wherever. This is, I say, in, in religion, they do jaywalking. In my country, you can be charged for jaywalking. Jaywalking means, you know, you cross the street, you know, where there's not pedestrian crossing. There's supposed to be certain pedestrian crossing in our main roads. And if you cross anywhere else, the police on the other side, he can catch you and he can give you a ticket for what is called jaywalking. The Christians have jaywalked into people's names. Anywhere, everywhere. So now, Jesus Christ, in his second coming, we believe that he's coming again. What for? We are told in the Gospel of St. Matthew why he's going to come again. He says, on that day, many will say to me on that day, when he's coming, second coming, say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? Didn't we do all these things in your name? We build hospitals, co colleges, universities. We looked after the poor. Didn't we do all these things? in your And we cast out devils. We heal the sick and the blind and the lepers. Didn't we do it in your name? Jesus says, Then will I profess unto them, these guys, these people, who say we did all these things in your name. Lord, Lord, we did it in your name. Jesus says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Get away out of my sight. Foot sack. Get away, you rubbish. I don't even know you. I'm asking the Christians. He said, Look, why should he tell you foot sack? That's a, our local term. That means get away. Why would he tell you, Get out of my sight? When you did all these things in his name. He's not going to tell the Hindus. Get away, foot sack. He's not going to tell the Muslims, get away, foot sack. He's not going to tell uh, the Jews, get away, foot sack. But he's going to tell you, the Christian, those who say, Lord, Lord. I say, I want to know why. Why would he tell you foot sack? Answer that. And no answer forthcoming. Why would he tell you? Not the Jews, not the Hindus, not the Muslims, but you, his followers. And who have done this miracles, we have worked miracles, and he's going to tell you, get out. So I said, he's coming to do a certain job of work. But in his second coming, let's say we recognize him, that this is Jesus in his second coming. And you shout, you cry out, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. I say he won't even turn and look at you. Because he never heard the word Jesus and he never heard the word Christ in his life. Because these are new words you have concocted. He says, he saw Yeshua, you say Jesus, he doesn't know. He says, I don't know who you're shouting for. <laughs> so they translated the word Messiah into Christ. Christ he never heard. Peter, Peter, his leading disciple. You see, before he parted, he says, Peter, feed my, feed my flock, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Meaning, look after the others. You are, you know, the elder most. You are the most mature. The best qualified to look after the others. Peter, his name was Simon. Simon Peter. Heard the name? Peter. Common name among the Christians. I said, you know, Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. You didn't know that? You see, his name was Simon. And Jesus at one stage, you know, because of his stubbornness, he was a very stubborn you know, and militant like the Irish man. The Irish man. They're fighting people. Spirited people. So he was one of that type among his disciples. The most militant. So Jesus describes that quality. He says, Simon, thou art Kephas. 
And on this rock I'll build my church. Thou art Kephas. Kephas in Hebrew means a rock. You are like a rock. Thou art Kephas. Kephas means rock or stone. So the Christians translated that into Petros. Petros in Greek means rock or stone. From which you get the word Peter. Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. Believe me. You got to. I want people to come forward and say, no, I'm wrong. I want people to come and correct me. Learned men, come and talk to me. I said, Peter never heard the word Peter in his life. He was Simon Kephas. You translated Kephas into Petros. Kephas means rock or stone. Petros means rock or stone. From which you now derive the word Peter. See what's happening? This is a type of sickness. All subject people have. To try and match you, the sound of your name to match that of the ruling race. Inferiority complex, as we all suffer from. My own people in South Africa, we suffer from the sickness as well. I don't know about you here, you are expatriates, you are all new here. But I don't know when a settled community, that settled community, how they behave as they get along. We have Yusuf, we'll call them Joe. We call them Joe. We have Fatima, we call them Tima. You know, sounds like, like the Western, Tima. If he says Fatima, you know, is the daughter of Muhammad. Khadija, we say Dija. Ibrahim, we say Abraham. Abraham. No, this is, is a, a, an inferiority complex we all suffer from. And the Christians were not exempt from that sickness. And that created problems. You translated names of people. Saul translated to Paul. You see, some Saul, if you're a child, you name him, as a Christian, you name him Saul, people think you're a Jew. But if you change that Paul, Saul to Paul, Paul sounds Greek or Roman. <laughs> <laughs>